and it's reflecting on that as a evening's work. Yeah, it's just, honestly, I can't put into words what it means. Um, I am just over the absolute moon. I don't think I'll ever get, um, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think I'll ever get a moment like that in my career again. Just the crowd was just, it was mad, absolutely mad. And I just called my wee granny there and she was crying. So it, was, <laughs> it set me off. Um, yeah, it's really special. My third Commonwealth Games um, to represent in the, I've done the steeplechase, the 1500, the 5K, and I've come sixth in all of them. And tonight, I just, I really wanted a medal. Um, and the crowd over the last 200, that honestly just, it just gave me such a boost. I, could, I couldn't believe it. I felt I just had this energy out of nowhere. And um, it just helped, it helped massively. And yeah, I can't put it into words. I think it'll sink in tomorrow when I wake up. Um, that yeah, I, actually, I did it, I, I won it. And what does it mean to win the gold? Because you've got other medals, but a gold medal. Yeah, I mean, I've obviously I've I've had uh, no Commonwealth medals. Um, I have a European medal from indoors and outdoors, but yeah, my first title and to do it at the age of 31, like that's what I'm even more proud about. I'm getting stronger, both not only physically but just mentally as well. Like I believe in myself now, and I think confidence for me has always been a huge thing. And I think that's just helped from like not only my mum and dad, but my my partner Michael, like. He just believes in me, he has this utmost faith that he sees like glimpses of it in training and then we've come to racing and I've just had a yeah, a bit of a tough time with whether it's illness or injury and niggles at just at the wrong time and tonight everything came together. Like I'm so proud of the race I put it together tonight. I, I kept I felt like I had made all the right moves, I put myself in contention and Michael kept saying to me at some point those ladies are gonna come past you and just keep closing the gap and that's honestly the, ke the thing I kept reminding myself was close, 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 stay as close as you possibly can because he kept saying that last K, the crowd will just drag you around, even if you're dead on your feet, the noise in the stadium will just give you that buzz and you'll, it'll help boost you and that's exactly what happened, I can't explain, the last 600 metres was just a blur and the last 200 metres was like it didn't even happen, like I can't, I, I don't I'll ever hear a noise like that. Um, incredible it really was yeah let me ask you when when you talk about things like executing race plans strategies processes when does that go out the window and then suddenly the emotion of tonight and the gold medal and the finish line getting closer and the raw kick in for you yeah i think i went through a bit of a wobble at like halfway because i i was leading the race i obviously um it was a bit windy tonight as well i thought god have i gone too early um, it was quite slow through the first half as well, and obviously I prefer it when the pace is, is quick. Like in Hengo this year, I set the pace at 15 minutes, um, which is, was British record territory, and tonight was 15.40, so I was way off the sort of pace that I like to, to, to clip along at. And so I started to panic a little bit. I thought, God, am I just a sitting duck? Like It happened obviously at World Champs, and I just felt like at some point people are gonna come past. But I was so fired up from that to not make that mistake again, to sort of, yeah, keep as close as I possibly could because again, I knew that crowd in the last K would be, would really get me round. And I actually had, as I said, a bit of a wobble halfway, but once I got to about five laps and there was the three of us in contention, I thought, okay, calm down now. You've got people almost doing the work for you at this point. I'm not always taking every single lap. Like they came past, I think at the right time and it really just, I kept saying to myself, relax, <laughs> relax, try and relax. Um, and at 600 to go, I knew I had a medal chance. That I couldn't see the big screen. That was the weirdest thing. Like usually I kept looking up to see how many of us are away and I had no idea. And I think running scared helped a little bit as well. I wasn't sure and I really was determined to win a medal. But yeah, that last 600, I sort of thought I could do it. There was sort of a glimmer of hope that I could maybe stick in and do it. And the last 200, I knew I could do it. I think just something just came over me and that crowd noise, I, I can't put into words. It was just, it was insane. It really was. Final one then from me. We saw you with your mum, obviously celebrating with the Sultan, and then here in Clara, Scotland, in the Alexander <laughs> Stadium. What goes through your mind when all of those magical moments come together like that? Yeah, I don't think I'll get another moment like this in my career. Um, I'm 
I'm obviously 31 now. Um, this probably is going to be my last sort of serious track season. Um, and even an hour before the race, my dad was like, you've got a chance tonight, like, so make the most of it. Don't finish the race thinking, I wish I'd done this or I wish I'd made a move here. Like, do it and give yourself the best possible chance you can. Um, so to have my mum there and, yeah, we don't get to represent Scotland very often. So to have, quite literally follow in her footsteps and, and become a Commonwealth champion so many years after her, it's, it's probably not quite something just yet. And, it's very rare that my family are actually here as well. Like my dad was in the crowd, Michael, my mum. Couldn't persuade my siblings. So I've got three brothers and a sister and they didn't come. But the rest of uh, yeah, my mum and dad are really here and, and that's really special. Like we don't get that very often. Um, to actually have your support system in the, the crowd seeing that moment. As I said, I, I think this will be probably the, the best moment of my career. It's something that I'll always look back on with, with really fond memories of. It's quite a strange time to talk, as if you you always got your time on the horizon after a race like that tonight. Yeah, I mean it's definitely not retiring anytime soon. I just think in athletics, especially on the lineup, we always hear, "Oh, this woman's 31, 35." 30. So to be honest, I'm just inspired by a lot of those women, and I feel like I'm certainly one of the oldest in the team now. We have such youngsters coming through, which is great to see, but. Um, I suppose I just mean my career on the track, like I've definitely got road racing on my horizon. Um, it was always the plan that for Paris 2024 that we'd be looking at the marathon and that's certainly the next step that we'll be taking. And I suppose there was a bit of me tonight that was fueled by that as well, like I wanted to prove that I am still good enough on the track, like I've had a lot of people say oh she should have moved up the roads a long time ago, like um, she's not quick enough on the track and that's always part and parcel at the back of your mind too and I know I can have a good finish in May so I really wanted to sort of not end my track career with that but I, I wanted a medal, I knew that maybe the next Commonwealth Games will be the marathon for me. Um, I'd like the 10k to still, it's still a bit of speed work, but certainly the next chapter for me is, is on the roads. Um, so this was a really nice way to just cement that.